morning, everyone. I am here in Hurricane, Utah at the Winter 4x4 Jamboree. And behind me, there are six to 700 Jeeps and other four-wheel drive vehicles. We're gonna catch up with Gil and tell you a little bit more about what this event is all about. You know, we're the only, we're, there are about 60 vehicles in our lineup to go to the West Rim Trail. And I, I'm pretty sure we are the only Toyota in this lineup. I, I'm almost positive. You know, buddy, if I get us lost, I won't tell anybody, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> This is Kent McKee, he's our tail gunner today, and Julie Applegate is our mid gunner. And I'm Carol. Carol is <laughs> the driver. <laughs> what gun are you? She's the boss. She's about the boss. Number one. one of the first things we always stress when we start out is no booze on the trail, no booze on the fairgrounds, just no booze. If anybody is found with booze, they will be arrested and their vehicle will be confiscated. <laughs> We know from experience we had it happen last year. We're headed out caravan style um, to the West Rim Trail and we'll go up there at the trailhead and we'll do our errand down and, and things of that nature. Do a little bit of a driver meeting and check up and then we'll hit the trail. Things happen fast in the morning when you show up to this event. We showed up, registered, and then it is get in line, driver meeting, haul on up to the trailhead, air down, and you are on the road. So there's no, there's no lollygagging. Driver.
Trail. I'm Dave Ward, and uh, we live here in uh, in St. George. You're familiar with the trails here, then. You've been rolling around here for, yeah. for quite a long time. Yeah. What was yesterday like for you with that rain? Yesterday was uh, as tough as I've ever seen it here. Really? Um, we did a trail last week called Fault Line that was difficult. It's a six, but um, but it was very doable. Yesterday mm -hmm. it was a struggle all day long. Yeah. I mean, we had it starts out with a with about a 29 to 30 percent climb in the mud. It was really difficult, and it just got more difficult from there. Uh, there was there was obstacles that we went up that were um, very doable. Yeah. And yesterday, sometimes you had to take two or three shots at them to get up. Yeah. Thanks for chatting with us. You bet. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Jason Johnson. Jason Johnson. He's hiding. <laughs> <laughs> so where are you from? You, you're, we're here in St. George. Where did you come down from? We're from Grand Prairie, Alberta, Canada. Right on. Yeah. And, and you're on a, like, a kind of a lengthy trip. We're just on a sanity trip. We're uh -huh. just driving until it's warm enough to use the tent. We actually happened upon the event thanks uh -huh. to your Instagram page. We're not used to this terrain. Quite sure what this red stuff is all about. So okay, we're find we'll out. find out. We'll do some. We'll do yeah. some rock climbing. How long have you had the the jeep? He's almost four years old. Uh huh. <laughs> So today the the trail is uh, it's pretty <clears throat> it's pretty remote from what I hear, which is awesome because there are some preserved petroglyphs, and we're gonna go check that out when we go to a lunch stop. The drive coming in here has been a mud fest. So halfway up the halfway up this cliff, uh, there's something called the birthing caves, and we're gonna go check it out. And apparently, Native Americans used to have their kids up there. And I can see a couple of reasons why that might be uh, uh, an awesome location. One, the the opening is concave, so any noise that happens down in this valley echoes through that cave up there, and you can hear anything. Also, it's removed, it's remote, it's out of the way. And it's a very sacred place, so when you go up there, you're going to see some petroglyphs, and I, I really look forward to seeing that. So let's go check it out. Absolutely, absolutely amazing. Um, so most of the time we like to share locations so that you guys can go out there and have your own adventure. But here's the fact, and it's unfortunate. Um, these sacred places get vandalized, and this is just a message to anybody listening. Please 
keep our sacred places intact. These are historical landmarks and locations. If you do happen to stumble across petroglyphs or something else of that kind, please leave it as you found it and be cautious about spreading the word until as a population, as a society, we have just a little bit more respect for our sacred places. All right, let's get going. Yo, so we're, we're wrapping up an, an awesome weekend. You invited Overland Bound out to be a guest at the Winter 4x4 Jamboree, working together with the Utah Public Lands Alliance. Can you tell us, in, in addition to having a great time, which it has been, what is, this, what is this all about? Well, basically, Winter 4x4 Jamboree was developed in order to help fund uh, keeping trails open mm -hmm. and trails in good shape, building new trails, things like that. And it's in over the past few years, last year they donated $44,000 to that effort. And this year we promised to bring at least that probably quite a bit more. Uh, that's the purpose why we're here is because we really want to uh, keep our trails open and see if we can create more trails. This has really grown rapidly over the last few years. How many people come? How many Jeeps? How many trails? Tell us a little bit about the event itself. We've had, uh, over the last five years, this is the fifth year that we're having the event, uh, we've gone from 200 people to where now we have almost 700 people. I shouldn't say people, that, that's actually 700 vehicles. Yeah. And we average about 2.4 people per vehicle. That's what the BLM figures for us. Uh, we, we have three days of trails. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the total is somewhere in the neighborhood of like 85 trails. That, that we run. One of the things I'd like people to pull away from this video and also as you, you know, become more connected with the great outdoors, you participate in, in public lands, you go out there and you enjoy the lands is know that folks like the Utah Public Lands Alliance and many groups around the country actually yeah. work very, very hard to not only clean our trails, but maintain them and advocate for keeping those public lands open. What I'd like to add mainly is the fact that keeping access to trails uh, we have a lot of people who don't understand exactly what that means, but it's also for people who are handicapped, mm -hmm. uh, vets, people that, like that that can go, go out and go do things that they can do in, in the outdoors rather than, than being cooped up or being locked up in town. So yeah. it's a, a really good if we can make it to where people can have access to these places rather than shutting it all down so that the far, the, only the privileged few who have their health and things can, yeah. can take advantage of them. We look forward to, to collaborating with you more in the future. Maybe yes. we can do a rally together or something like Very that. Much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, one thing that we, we definitely want to do, and that's one of the reasons why we invited you to come here, is that we'd like to, to make more contact with, with the people that are in the overlanding community. And for one thing, those people are usually pretty tuned in on mm -hmm. the fact that we need to keep our uh, trails clean and they're good stewards of the land. Hey, you guys realize that, you know, uh, even the government bodies that are in place, BLM land and the National Park Service don't have the bodies and the manpower to maintain public lands the way they should be maintained. And what I'd like to add to that is that we do projects like National Public Lands Day where we have over 100 people show up to help clean up these trails. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is over 20,000 acres. In, in one day we go out and we clean those up but with a lot of help from all of the people, the various people that ride ATVs or, or motorcycles mm -hmm. or the, the jeeping community also. Well, hey, thank you very much for having us this weekend. Thank we you really for coming. appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, likewise. Yeah, very absolutely. Great.